Well, it's gonna be a sunny one. A little chilly out this morning. Got started on corn a little bit yesterday. This morning, at some point, we are gonna start up the grain dryer, get that moving, and then we'll be wide open on corn. Right now, Dad and Scott are five miles north of here dealing with a broken down Peterbilt. Uh-oh. J. Mike, it is not safe for you to be down here. I told you that yesterday. What are you doing? You cannot be running around with all the semis coming in and out of this yard. All right, I only got one hand because I'm holding the cat and the other. There we go. Come on out, chickens. They're a little afraid of all the animals. I'm a little concerned that this guy has figured out that if he follows me down to the bins in the morning, I'll bring him in and let him snuggle with the girls. And now he knows that that's his routine. Where are you trying to go? All right, back to work. All right, back to work. The birds are already busy cleaning up any spilt corn from yesterday, turning them into eggs. It's important to keep tabs on the moisture, and I, I mean, the moisture sensor in the combine seems pretty close. I just want to know for sure what we're putting in the bin, so I know kind of where to set that dryer and what we got to start with. Yeah, that'll do. <laughs> truck one is going. Check truck two over. And tire check. Eighteen good ones. Time for a little road trip all the way to the other end of the yard. Here we are. And hoof it back to the other end of the yard again. Well, it's been about 11 months since I ran a grain dryer. Come on. There we go. Use a reset. All normal. We also got our new box here. So this is the sink system through Sukup. So this is going to help us monitor the grain inside that big bin. We'll see temperature, humidity, uh, CO2s, gases if there are any and pressure it looks like. So I, I actually don't know too much about that yet. I'll know a lot more once we get it going, but this will automatically kick the bin fans off and on if the temperature gets too high in the grain or it starts to pick up any gases in there. It's gonna kick those fans on, call for air, and cool that grain down. Morning, cow. Everything is too expensive to not check the oil on it every morning. <laughs> one-handed stuff just doesn't work that well. It's the camera. The camera takes up one of my hands most of the time. Maybe someday I'll be a real farmer and I'll get to farm with both hands. Until then, I guess I'll keep making you guys some videos. I don't need to start the combine yet, but at least I know the oil's good now. The grain cart's got 51,000 pounds of corn in it, so I'm gonna load that up and dump that as well. Not load it up, unload it. Well, look at that, we got two more guys in a third truck. He's got a load of soybeans on, so now we gotta switch everything over to dump a load of soybeans and then switch it all back to make sure the corn goes in the right spot. Morning. Morning. 46 degrees out and you're in shorts. I don't get it. It'll be 30 outside, I'm still in shorts. Yeah, I know. Just gonna check back here, make sure it sounds like the beans are not going in the sand bin. Which it sounds as though they're not. I hear nothing. Brain systems are a pain in the butt. 
all the time. But they're a very, very good return on investment if you use them correctly. We just need to make dang sure our beans are going in the bean bin. Time to get a bin ready. So this is the big new bin. This is uh, 60 feet wide on the bottom. I don't remember how tall it is exactly. Okay, there, center sumps wide open. Everything looks good there. We got Sukup's new paddle sweep in here. This is how the floor looked without shoveling or sweeping anything. This sweep cleaned the floor up like this. These cables are for that new sink system. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten cables hanging in through here. These are going to sense the grain. There's sensors on these cables like this. Run all the way to the ceiling so it can tell me the level of the grain, temperature, the gases. That's what I was talking about earlier. So this one, that one stays open. Yeah. That's the way. That's the way I've been. This one's closed. Yeah. Well, I think it's over here. I think that's it. It's pretty solid. running on the dryer it's empty right now just kind of working our way into familiarizing ourselves with things and I remembered I got to get up to that filter this is the intake for the air system for all the air that pushes all the grain into the bins so if this filter is bad we are restricted on moving grain and then not only is it less efficient but you you stand a much higher chance of plugging pipes and I hate plugging air pipes. So, I'm gonna check this filter. And I'm pretty sure that I didn't take it off after last year. Okay, let's see. <laughs> so this is our filter in here, and then this is, this is like an eagle nest. This would have been a really bad situation probably. Yeah, that wouldn't have been a good deal. Huh? Yeah. No, I'm guessing he didn't. Yeah, I've never seen that before. <laughs> well, there's a perfect little pouch on the top that's full of feathers. So I'm guessing it wasn't mice or elephants. Giraffe, maybe. They could reach up here. I kind of wonder if we should get that Milwaukee vacuum up here before I pull the filter off and vacuum down in. There's like a, there's an inch wide gap between the filter and the base and it's all full of, well, mostly straw and bird shit. Yeah, you have a portable vacuum? Yeah, I got one in the race trailer. Yes. Yeah, it's a good idea. Air filter is all cleaned out. We got that handled. Now we're running corn from a dry bin. Goes up, comes down into the dryer. So we got to fill this dryer. We're going to put dry corn on the bottom. And here we go. A little bit loud. Hurts my ears a little. It's very loud when it's empty and you're filling it. Yeah. So we're going to start the unload up here. Um, I want to make sure it's very slow. We don't want it at 40% though. Dryer's filling just fine. Dad's going to stay back and get that actually started, get the burners going, get everything actually running. I'm going to fold this thing up and head up the road where we have 50 acres, 48 acres of corn that should be every bit as dry, but the problem is on one end of the field, this has some much wetter corn because there's peat ground up there, so it's very high yielding, very good corn. 
but there's 10 or 15 acres there where it's 26 percent moisture instead of 19 to 20 like the rest of the field so we're gonna go get that field done first What have you two been doing? Not hanging out with me. Juicing. We're all juiced up, Ditch. You have a good afternoon, okay? Heads up, dog. Onyx beat me here. Unfolding. Folding corn head. One of my favorite things. And folding hoppers. Okay, what else? I've got my field picked out. I've got my auto path turned on. I think I'm ready. Got about an acre open here next to the approach so we can get semis in and out. And I'm not full, but before we take off around the field, I may as well get rid of what I have. I had about 8,000 pounds back there. I hate doing end rows in corn. Unfortunately, you gotta do them. But they're just, they're not very efficient. They take so much more time. I hate working corn heads back and forth in the corners. It's just never, end rows are not fun, it is what it is. There we go, there's some decent corn here. I guess it's still not yielding what I wish it was, but it's standing well. Part of our issue has actually been the last two, three weeks where it's been so hot and so dry that the corn is starting to get really brittle. And we've got a couple specific hybrids where the stock quality and the stock strength is on the weak side, the low side. So. We get high winds coming through when this stuff gets so dry and brittle and the stalks actually start breaking off. So that's why we're taking these first hybrids. I mean, they are the driest as well, which is good, but you always want to take those hybrids first for that reason, because when that happens, the cob lays down, it's harder to pick up, it's harder to harvest. I've decided to dump right here because I'm full, and I know that I'm full because I heard grain fall on the roof above my head. So it took me Oh, 30 acres before I got well, capcorn. You are corn right now. You couldn't have gone another three feet. Uh, yeah. I, I knew I was full by the sound of the grain falling on the roof. Million dollars from a fund used to deliver tariffs, tariff assistance to farmers. Okay. All these trees on these ends of these fields. Do they make an attachment that would go on a tractor that can get up high enough to just buzz half of those trees off? At least half of our fields have problem spots like this where the trees just keep growing over the edge of the field and the field keeps moving out and out and out. And I hate working around them with the combines because I don't want to scratch up our tractors or grain carts or combines, whatever. So somebody let me know if there's an attachment out there that I don't. I haven't looked. Maybe there is, but I'd be. I'd really love to run some sort of an attachment that could just come trim all these off real quick. And I know a chainsaw would do it, but I don't. I, I don't want to spend all winter cutting around the edges of our fields with chainsaws. Ain't nobody got time for that. Find me something faster, more efficient. All right, guys. I apologize, but it's been. I don't know. Roughly three hours. Three and a half. I don't know. Forty-eight acres later. I'm finished here. So Colton came out, helped me calibrate a whole bunch of stuff. We got the tank a little bit cleaner. It was clean before. We got it better now. I'm finishing off everything here. I do have to clean my windows again, which by the way, thank you to social media for telling me about these California dusters, which are phenomenal. I was told that the trick is to start with clean windows and then feather dust them every night so that the dew doesn't get on dirty windows. And as long as you do that, it's a game changer and so far it's been pretty awesome. I was having a couple of issues yesterday when I got started on corn. I 
didn't calibrate something correctly, so I had Colton come out and help with that. Colton works for uh, Midwest Machinery, our local dealer. He came out and helped us, helped me set that all up. We actually had to take the header off. Um, we worked with some of the automation settings on just some of the stuff that I didn't quite fully understand yet. And uh, we got things really pretty awesome, actually. Um, got it going pretty fast. I got a lot more confidence in this thing. Not that I didn't have confidence before, but I learned a lot of things in the last three hours. This machine is really smart. It does a lot of really cool, efficient things really well, but everything's gotta be calibrated correctly. You have to have the right input in it in order for it to know what it's doing. And once you have all that set, it is, it is really cool to see where this stuff is going. Just every year there's new things that blow my mind. The one thing it doesn't do is remind me to close the grain tank covers pretty much every time I'm going to leave a field. I'm going to take a few minutes here. I need some diesel and probably a ham and cheese Sammy. We got a lot of things calibrated. It was an afternoon full of calibrations, but it does pretty good. Good. Fueled up and here we go all the way to the backyard. Look at that Did you, uh, moon! Did you run in the other guy's car? I picked up a passenger. I can. Do you have anything Interesting to tell the internet today? No. Still nothing. No. You gotta have something prepared for next time. Okay. Our window's getting dusty again, Isla. You're trying I'll to hide? Clean it. You'll clean it? Yeah. Alright, we'll clean it when we get to the end. Okay. Okay. Isla needs a corn cob. And then I'm gonna let her dust my windows. Pick your corn cob. Not that one. It's gonna be very, it's a tough decision, isn't it? Hmm. For the most part, there is much better corn in this field. It's still highly variable just from having way too much rain for the most part, but there's a lot of areas of this field that are actually running really well, so this is gonna do a lot better than that first one we did today. That's gonna do it for the night. Isla and I are gonna take the truck home and she wants to show you guys her creation. That's a very interesting creation, Isla. What what, what do you call it? Uh, corn on the cob propel. Corn on the cob propel, that's very creative. How'd you come up with that name? <laughs> now what is it? Well, if you're corn playing with all the corn on the fence line, are you going to leave it cob. and let the fence line expand? Or not the, the tree line, I meant... You're talking about the trees that are overgrowing? Yeah, like we're around almost the whole row of you left three rows of corn. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll come and grab those. I just don't like working around the trees. We need to get something that hacks the edges of the trees off quickly. What did I tell you guys? There you go. You want to tell them thanks for watching? Thanks for watching.